God is loving. God is kind. God is your treasure. God opens doors when you knock. He is the master key to every lock. Biblical Prayers In the beginning of creation, God saw all that He had made and it was good. He gave man the power to rule the world. But man did not obey the command of the Lord, so that he could not be united with the Lord. Throughout the Bible we see God conversing tirelessly with man. He is the one who takes the first step in the conversation. Adam, who vanished after his first sin, though he refused, God called him. Mentioned in Genesis chapter 3 verse 9. But the Lord God called to the man, Where are you? God first called Abraham and blessed him. Then Abraham started to converse with the Lord. Supplication of Abraham in Genesis chapter 15 verse 2 to 3 Sovereign Lord, what can you give me since I remain childless? And the one who will inherit my estate is Eliezer of Damascus. And Abraham said, you have given me no children, so a servant in my household will be my heir. Abraham knew God's plan. Despite his faith being tested, he puts his trust in God's trustworthiness. God also spoke to Moses. He had a close relationship with God. He stood before the Lord for the situation of his people, enclosed by Exodus chapter 5 verse 22 to 33. Moses returned to the Lord and said, Why, Lord, why have you brought trouble on this people? Is this why you sent me ever since I went to Pharaoh to speak in your name? He has brought trouble on this people, and you have not rescued your people. God spoke to the prophets face to face. They meditate on him and his power. The undiminished mercy of the Lord on the people is then manifested. They reflect on his glorious deeds and renew the hope as a promise to be fulfilled. In their prayer, we find human emotions such as joy, sorrow, gratitude, supplication for need, meditation and devotion, expression of hope and protest, mourning and anger. Here in Isaiah chapter 12 verse 1 to 6, one such prayer is in the form of a song which is a thanksgiving praise for the liberation of the people. In that day you will say, I will praise you, Lord. Although you were angry with me, your anger has turned away and you have comforted me. Surely God is my salvation. I will trust and not be afraid. The Lord himself is my strength and my defense. He has become my salvation. With joy, you will draw water from the wells of salvation. In that day, you will say, Give praises to the Lord, proclaim His name, make known among the nations what He has done. 
and proclaim that his name is exalted. Sing to the Lord, for he has done glorious things. Let this be known to all the world. Shout aloud and sing for joy, people of Zion. For great is the Holy One of Israel among you. However, every prayer will contain the praises of the Lord. It can be seen as an opportunity to praise the Lord and an element of faith even in suffering and injustice. In Daniel chapter 3 verse 26 to 49, we see another biblical prayer into the midst of the fire. Shadrach, Meshach and Abednego walked about in the flames singing to God and praising the Lord. They gained the light and strength they need for their mission. Blessed are you and praiseworthy, O Lord, the God of our ancestors, and glorious forever is your name. For you are just in all you have done. All your deeds are faultless, all your ways are right, and all your judgments proper. You have executed proper judgments in all that you have brought upon us and upon Jerusalem, the holy city of our ancestors. By a proper judgment you have done all this because of our sins, for we have sinned and transgressed by departing from you. And we have done every kind of evil. Your commandments we have not heeded or observed, nor have we done as you ordered us for our good. Therefore, all you have brought upon us, all you have done to us, you have done by a proper judgment. You have handed us over to our enemies, lawless and hateful rebels, to an unjust king the worst in all the world. Now we cannot open our mouths. Shame and reproach have come upon us, your servants who revel you. For your namesake, do not deliver us up forever, or make void your covenant. Do not take away your mercy from us, for the sake of Abraham, your beloved, Isaac your servant and Israel your holy one, to whom you promised to multiply their offspring like the star of heaven or the sand on the shore of the sea. For we are reduced, O Lord, beyond any other nation, brought low everywhere in the world this day because of our sins. We have in our day no prince, prophets or leader, no burnt offering, sacrifices, oblation or incense, no place to offer first fruits, to find favor with you. But with contrite heart and humble script, let us be received, as though it were burnt offerings of rams and bulls or tens of thousands of fat lambs. So let our sacrifice be in your presence today and find favor before you. For those who trust in you cannot be put to shame. And now we follow you with our whole heart. We fear you and we seek your face. Do not put us to shame but deal with us in your kindness and great mercy. Deliver us in accord with your wonders and bring glory to your name, O Lord. Let all those be put to shame who inflict evils on your servants. Let them be shamed and powerless and their strength broken. Let them know that you alone are the Lord God, glorious over the whole world.
The Magnificat, taken from St. Luke's Gospel, chapter 1, verse 45 to 55, is the Blessed Virgin Mary's hymn. Mary proclaims the Lord's greatness and praising Him for what God has made in her. My soul doth magnify the Lord, and my spirit hath rejoiced in God my Saviour, because He hath regarded the humility of His handmaid. For behold, from henceforth all generations shall call me blessed, because He that is mighty hath done wonderful things to me, and holy is His name. And his mercy is from generation unto generations, to them that fear him. He hath swayed mighty in his arm. He hath scattered the proud in the consight of their heart. He hath put down the mighty from their seat, and hath exalted the humble. He hath filled the hungry with good things, and the rich he hath sent empty away. He has received Israel, his servant, being mindful of his mercy, as he spoke to our fathers, to Abraham, and to his seed forever. The next prayer in Bible is in St. Luke chapter 1, verse 68 to 79. It is the Zacharias Thanksgiving song for what God has made for his people. Blessed be the Lord God of Israel, because he hath visited and wrought the redemption of his people, and hath raised up a horn of salvation to us in the house of David his servant, as he spoke by the mouth of his holy prophets, who are from the beginning. Salvation from our enemies and from the hand of all that hate us, to perform mercy to our fathers, and to remember his holy testament, the oath which he swore to Abraham our father, that he would grant to us, the beginning of delivered from the hand of our enemies, we may serve him without fear, in holiness and justice before him, all our days and thou child shalt be called the prophet of the highest for thou shalt go before the face of the lord to prepare his way to give knowledge of salvation to his people unto the remission of their sins through the bowels of the mercy of our god in which the orient from on the high hath visited us to enlighten them that sit in darkness and in the shadow of death, to direct our feet into the way of peace. In the prayer of our Lord Jesus Christ, the structure of the prayer is fully revealed to us. Matthew chapter 6 verse 9 to 13 Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our super substantial bread, and forgive us our debits, as we also forgive our debtors, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. For if you will forgive men their offenses, your heavenly Father will forgive you also your offenses, but you will not forgive men, neither will your Father forgive you for your offenses. Prayer of Thanksgiving at Lazarus Resurrection John chapter 11 verses 41 and 42 And Jesus lifting his eyes said, Father, I give thee thanks that thou hast heard me, and I knew that thou hadrest me always. But because of the people who stand about have I said it, 
that they may believe that thou hast sent me. Commutarian prayer, asking for interior fortitude to announce the word of God. Acts chapter 4 verse 24 to 30. With one accord lifted their voice to the Lord and said, Lord, thou art he that did make heaven and earth, the sea and all things that are in them, who by the Holy Ghost, by the mouth of our father David, thy servant, has said, Why did the Gentiles rage, and the people meditate vain things? The king of earth stood up, and the prince assembled against the Lord and his Christ, for the truth they are assembled in the city against thy holy child Jesus, whom thou hast anointed, Herod, and Pontius Pilate, with the Gentiles and the people of Israel, to do what thy hand and thy counsel decreed to be done. And now, Lord, behold their threatenings, and grant unto thy servants that will all confidence they may speak thy word by stretching forth thy hand to curse and sign and wonders to be done by the name of the Holy Son Jesus. Prayer is the sacred feelings that arise from the heart of every human being. So, we must approach God as Moses approached the burning thorn. We must first establish and implore Him in our thinking. Think about what stuck you most as you read the Bible. Why this? Next to know what He is asking for in your prayers. Speak to God about your thoughts. Listen to God's response. If there is a fire in you, make sure you burn.